Thanks, everyone. So the last time that I was on this stage was the day that the Blue Jays got eliminated from the playoffs. And I was just reflecting on that, and I thought, wow, I think the progress of Fun Through and the progress of the Blue Jays diverged significantly at that day. And now, four years later from when we started and two years later from when we were all disappointed by the Blue Jays, I have a lot of lessons that um, I thought that I would share. So it's never a clear sail forward. Um, and anybody who tells you differently uh, either hasn't run a company or is hiding something. So let me first start. Thank you, uh, Leah, for that, uh, that introduction. Um, fun through bridges that cash flow gap for small businesses. Uh, 50 years ago, when somebody used to sell something, they would sell it, and then they would get paid immediately. And somehow, the social norm changed over the years, where now you sell something, and then you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait. And after the crisis, you ended up, the financial crisis, you ended up waiting even longer and even longer. And you can wait 60, 90, 120 days. And that can kill you as a small business, because all of your capital is tied up in whatever you're waiting on, either a product on a shelf at a retailer, or tied up you know, in services that you've now provided, and you now have to pay your employees or, or pay your suppliers. And it's one of those things that can really destroy a small business's opportunity to grow. And we think that's not fair. So at Fun Through, we bridge that gap. A couple of lessons that I'm going to talk through today. Uh, number one is plug a leaky funnel and do it as quickly as you can. Do it much quicker than we did. When we first started, we had this brilliant idea of automating a thousand-year-old industry called factoring. Uh, who in this audience has ever heard the term factoring? Yeah, okay, it's a FinTech audience, but even then, probably only about a third has ever heard of it, and about half of that is my team at Fun Through. Uh, we thought that you know, if you could sell off of the credit worthiness of your customer, get funding off of the credit worthiness of your customer, and get infinite amount of capital simply by doing what you do best, which is sell, then that would be a great model for every small business to use. And we realized that when we started that there was a way to automate this to make it really great. But what we didn't account for were all of the hurdles that we had to have people jump through in order to be able to get that funding. They had to let their customers know. They had to change their payment details. They had to do things that weren't natural to them in their payment site, in their, their selling cycle. And that really crimped their ability to come through our funnel. So we really had this leaky funnel. And then we had an epiphany. And we said, well, wait a minute. What if we change the way we do business? And instead of asking you for a lot of information, and then having you have to scramble to print out bank statements and send them over to us or you know, find your, your business number or you know, print out your financial statements when they may not even be ready yet. Uh, what if we flip that around and we said simply connect to a few different data sources and we will get the data ourselves so you don't have to do anything and turn the onboarding process into a magical almost experience for small businesses. And what if we go one step further? What if we say, right now, when you go for a loan, we know that it's almost like a black box, and you don't know where the end is. So you will be asked for some information. That information will get analyzed in the background. You don't know for how long. And then they'll be asked for some more information. Well, what if we said, instead of this being a black box, we're going to give you a carrot to continue to give us information. Instead of simply asking for a lot of data and not giving anything in return, we said, if you're going to let us connect to your data sources, we're going to give you money almost instantly. It may not be exactly what you want, but we're going to show you that we're committed to you so that you can take that next step and give us a little bit more data so that we can give you a lot more money. And this is sort of what it looks like, and this is what it did. So when we realized that, the dam opened up. The dam opened up, and our number of users started skyrocketing. So we started to realize that, OK, this is working. Lesson number two is dance with those willing to dance. Early on, we realized that there are really three ways uh, that marketing was going to help us. One-to-one, -one, where we're direct marketing to user, potential users of our service. One-to-few, where we're marketing through intermediaries, through bookkeepers who they themselves may have 10 to 100 clients 
or accountants or lawyers or something like that. And then the third bucket was the one-to-many, where we can get a lot of users at a uh, low cost at the same spot very easily. Well, who has all the users in all the clients in Canada? The banks. So we spent a long time saying, well, we will be a great partner for you because we're servicing users that you don't service. These are users that are too small or too new or don't fit your credit box. These are users that are asset light that just don't get loans from you. And hey, they're actually users that you've told us aren't profitable for you as a small business, but they are profitable for you as an individual because they have their credit cards and their mortgages and their checking accounts and all their other stuff with you. So you wanna keep them. So we went out and we started talking to a lot of these banks and a lot of these other large institutions. But what we realized after having all these conversations, and early on, by the way, we were very honored that everybody wanted to talk to us. What we didn't realize was they wanted to talk to us because they wanted to understand what it was that was out there, not necessarily that they were gonna partner. So we spent a lot of time doing this, uh, and this was the result. We just weren't growing. Honestly, we weren't growing. Um, so we had two problems. We had hurdles that stopped people from coming to us, and we, had, we were going after the wrong channels. Because, you know, as a FinTech, we thought it would be great to get that branding, to get that partner in place, um, but it was the wrong strategy. Instead, we said, let's go to the, where the real users are and go niche. Who in this room has ever heard of this company, Cortex? Other than the fun through people. <laughs> Anybody here? Nobody. Cortex is a niche player that nobody here will have heard of that is an invoicing platform specific to the oil and gas space. If you're a small supplier to the large oil and gas players in Canada or the US, there's a high likelihood that you are invoicing, getting your purchase orders, and knowing whether your invoice is approved through the Cortex platform. Well, hey, let's go there. It's not sexy, but this is what happened. It works. And all of a sudden, we ended up getting a bunch of users with a partner where we made a meaningful difference. We wouldn't be you know, a, a speck um, in a big bank's financial statements, but we are making a meaningful revenue contribution to Cortex, which is a small public company and their stock price has doubled since they uh, did the partnership with us. I'll, uh, I'll say that's, that's not because of us, but it is uh, you know, at the same time as us. So think about... <laughs> <laughs> so think about, um, think about what partners are really the right partners, not the flashy partners, but the partners that are actually going to help drive your business. And then the last thing is pick the right investors. When we were doing this last round, our Series A round, we really wanted a U.S. investor on, on board. We had no U.S. traction, but we knew we were going to be growing in the U.S. We knew U.S. investors gave higher valuations. They gave bigger dollar amounts. And we knew that in order to get there, we needed the network, which we didn't have. We failed miserably. We couldn't attract any of them because we got the same story over and over again, which is, yeah, you're cute, you got some, uh, some traction, but there's nothing that we can actually say that is actually going to work in the U.S. Come back to us in six months. So we changed. We changed course. And we said, we are going to focus on investors who understand the plight of small business owners, who understand and lived through the hurdles that uh, the cash flow gaps that our users have. And we brought on... David Mervish. David Mervish, um, if anybody uh, knows the, his story, you can go and read this, uh, this, this Globe article. Along with him, by the way, virtually every one of our other investors is an entrepreneur themselves, either who has exited a business but experienced the pain or understands it as they are running their, uh, their business or their fund uh, right now. So picking the right investors who can actually add value uh, is really important as opposed to just picking anybody who you know, may have uh, Money, green, money that's green. So that's my quick uh, overview. I'll, I'll do uh, a quick plug, which is that we are hiring. Uh, we just closed this, uh, this round uh, last month. So, uh, and just to give you a sense of the culture, half our team is actually here, and you know, most of them are wearing fun through shirts. So come find somebody, come talk to us, and we'd be happy to, to discuss. Thanks for your time. Questions? Okay.
We got a question over here. Um, great presentation, very thorough. I like how you were vulnerable about your challenges in, uh, in, in growing your business. But uh, you mentioned three different buckets, one to one, one to few, and one to many. Where is the majority of your business now? And in those three buckets, have, have you completely ditched the one to, to many? And um, where are you looking to grow out of those three buckets? No, I think we just changed the definition of many. Um, so to us, Cortex is one to many. Um, we have several others as well that would be one to many. So those three things all play well together, uh, but one to many is really important for us. Um, and as you saw from Cortex, you know, it's, it's working there. Uh, but you need to be able to have you know, a broad tipping point where people are starting to talk about you and hearing about you, and that's not just the one to many, that is the one to one as well, and then being in the community where you know, we help uh, bookkeepers help their clients and you know, we want them to, to you know, get that halo effect of, of doing well, not just uh, billing their clients. So, you know, the one to few is still important as well. Got another question over here. I agree with the previous uh, commenter. You had a great presentation. Uh, okay. I was just wondering what kind of settle time, settlement times you can expect uh, with fund through. Yeah, so when you um, fund an invoice, as long as you fund it before 1 p.m., and you know, you're using a major bank, you're likely to get the funds that same day. If you don't get them the same day, you're gonna get them first thing the following morning. I'll ask a question. Are you only Canada still, or are you, and do you plan to expand to the States? No, so we are now in the, the US. 35% of our, our users are in the US. Uh, we just hired a few people uh, in the, the US, and we're growing there quite quickly. Yeah, so we are North American wide. One last question, if there's one out there. Yeah, we got one more question. I know you guys currently have a 12-week repayment period. Are you planning to expand on that in the future for higher loans? Like, what's the strategy moving forward? Yeah, so that 12-week uh, repayment period is part of the carrot that I, I talked about early on. Uh, when you have larger invoices, there actually is no repayment. You, we get paid when the invoice itself gets paid. And in addition to that, as, um, as we grow and the invoice amounts uh, get higher, uh, we're extending that 12 weeks to 16 and to 24 weeks as well. So there are a lot of different options, but at the end of the day, we're getting invoices paid right away. That's the important part. Thank you.